Welcome to the topic on creating lines. In this tutorial, you will learn creating lines using picking method, absolute coordinate method, ortho mode activated and dynamic mode activated. In this tutorial, you will also learn the concepts of properties palette, polar tracking and grip editing while creating lines. Lines are the most frequently and commonly used objects and you can see these objects almost everywhere in an AutoCAD drawing. In this video, I deal with different methods to construct lines. Before creating lines, I would like to deactivate all settings in the status bar toggles. I'll deactivate grid, dynamic mode and other settings here. Now I'll click on the customization button and activate the coordinates. When I move the mouse, you can see two coordinate values getting dynamically changed. This is nothing but X and Y coordinates of the cursor location. Now I'll click on the line command in the draw panel and the software is prompting for the first point. I can define the first point in a variety of ways but I left click the mouse to define the first point. Now you can see a rubber band line stretching from the first point and it is asking for the next point. Again I left click to define the next point. These coordinate locations you can see in the status bar. I'll just pick some random points to define the next segments. I can undo the previous segment using the undo option in the line command. Now I'll click to define few more points. I'll click on close to go out of the line command. Now I have created an irregular polygon. Alternatively, you can create lines by typing the letter L using the keyboard and you will get the same prompt sequence. I'll give enter to go out of the line command. But you can be more productive with lines only if you can create these objects at specific locations and at predefined dimensions. By creating the simple figure of the outline of a house, you will learn the procedure to create lines at specific locations, dimensions and angles. This is the dimension figure. When you go through the dimensions, you can see that the maximum dimension is 1200 and all the values are given in centimeters. I'll go back to the previous file Select all the objects and click on erase command to get rid of them. Now I'll click on application button, drawing utilities, units command. I'll set the linear measurement type to decimal, decimal position to two places and insertion scale units to centimeters. And I'll give OK. Now I should set limits. So I'll give limits command. At the lower left I'll set 0,0, .0 because there is no negative values in this figure. Now I should set my upper right corner. Since the maximum dimension to be plotted is 1200, I should give upper right a value which is above 1200. So let's give it as 1500, 1500. And I'll give a zoom all to bring the limits to the screen. So I'll type Z enter, A enter. Next I'll click on line command. When I'm asked to specify the start point, I'll type 0, 0, because I want the line to start exactly from the origin. Such method of point entry is called absolute coordinate method in which you define a point precisely using its x and y coordinate. I'll just hold down the scroll wheel of the mouse and drag it upward to pan the display. Now you can see the origin point clearly. Next I want to draw a line 1200 units rightward. For that I'll activate the ortho mode. In AutoCAD, when ortho mode is on, the cursor moves only in the horizontal and vertical directions and its free movement is restricted. But once you turn it off, you can see that it can move freely. Ortho mode can also be activated by using the F8 function key. Now I'll type 1200. Now AutoCAD has drawn a line in the direction of the cursor through a distance of 1200 units. Next I'll draw another line in the vertically upward direction through a distance of 300 units. So I'll keep my cursor in the upward direction. Since the ortho mode is on, it will move only in the vertical direction and I'll type the distance 300. This line has got a length of 300 units. Now I'll give enter to go out of the line command. Next I'll activate this button in the status bar. It is called dynamic mode. Now I want to repeat the line command. So right click and click on repeat line and I'll start from the end point. When you take the cursor onto this endpoint, you will get a tooltip that it's an endpoint. That's because we have an OSNAP button in the status bar which is on. We will talk more about OSNAP in the coming videos. Now I'll click on this endpoint and I'll turn off the ortho so that my cursor can move in all directions. 
Now you can see two values getting dynamically updated. The length of the line as well as its inclination with the x-axis or with the horizontal. This is because the dynamic mode is on. The length of the next line segment is 1200 units. So I'll type the value 1200. I want that line to be drawn in the leftward direction and I also want to control its angle. I'll just hit the tab key. Now you can edit the angle. You can see that the angle is changing from 0 to 90 when it is vertical to 180 when it is in the leftward direction. Since I want to move in the leftward direction, I'll give an angle of 180 degrees. Now this line has got a length of 1200 units and it is drawn in the leftward direction. The next line has got a length of 300 units and it is drawn straight down. So the angle is 90 degrees. Since the ortho is not on, along with the distance, you should also specify the angle. So I'll give 300 and I'll press the tab key to edit the angular value. When I move my mouse in the counterclockwise direction, you can see that the angle starts from 0 and it increases to 90 when it is vertical. When it is leftward, it's 180. In the clockwise direction, it starts from 0 and 90 when it is vertically down. When it is leftward, it's 180. So you should give an angular value of 90 degrees. Next, you should draw a vertical line 350 units from the origin point. So I'll right click and click on repeat line. When I'm asked to give the first point, I'll give 350 comma 0. I'll define that value in absolute coordinates. So 350, then you can give comma or you can press the tab key and 0. And I have started exactly from that point. It should be a vertical line. So I can turn on the ortho mode by pressing the F8 function key. Then I'll type the distance 300. Now you can just give an enter to go out of the line command. Next we will create the outline of the door. I should start from this particular endpoint. It is given that this point is at a distance of 125 units from the origin. From that point, 210 units upward, 100 units rightward and 210 units downward. So let's do that. I'll right click repeat line. When I'm asked to give the first point, I'll give 125, 0 in absolute coordinates. I've started from that point. You don't need dynamic input for the time being, so I'll disable it. I can straight away give the values. The height is 210. Keep the cursor in the rightward direction and type 100. Downward 210. And I have completed the door. Next we will create windows and roof for this residence using the line command. We will start by creating an outline for this window. If I want to start from this point, I should get the coordinates of this point. This point is at the same height as that of the door. So the y coordinate is 210 and the x coordinate is 350 plus 125, which is 475. That means if you can give 475 comma 210, you can locate this point. Then 150 rightward, 150 downward, 150 leftward and close. I'll right click and repeat line. At the first point prompt, I'll give 475 comma 210. Then rightward 150, downward 150, leftward 150 and close. Next, I'll create the outline of this window. These two windows are having the same dimension, but I should locate this particular point to start with. This distance is 125. So the x coordinate of this point is equal to 1200 minus 125, which is 1075. So the coordinate of this point is 1075 comma 210, then 150, 150, 150 and close. Right click, repeat line, 1075 comma 210, 150 down, 150 leftward, 150 upward and close to close it. While doing this, you should make sure that your ortho mode is on. That is why you could locate points precisely in the horizontal and vertical directions. Next, I'll create the outline for this roof. For that, I have to start from this end point. To locate this point, you can either directly snap onto it or else you can give coordinates to get it. Since the origin is here, the x coordinate of this point is 0 and the y coordinate is equal to the height of the wall, which is 300. So I'll give 0, 0,300 then 60 unit leftward and an inclined line at 45 degrees. This angle is taken in the counterclockwise direction and length of this inclined line is 332.34. It's also inclined at 45 degrees with respect to horizontal but in the clockwise direction. Once you reach here, you can always close to complete this triangle. 
Before I draw lines, I'll change the color. For that, I can use Properties Palette. To get the Properties Palette, click on View tab and Properties. Or else, you can activate this palette from the Quick Access Toolbar. Since the Properties is checked, it's already available in the Quick Access Toolbar. Or else, you can use the shortcut Ctrl-1, which is the easiest method to access the Properties Palette. Using this palette, you can change the properties related with objects such as color, line type, line weight, etc. We will see more about properties later. Now I'll change the color. So I'll click on Select Color. And I'll choose this particular color from the Select Color dialog box. This color has a color number of 21 and you can see it there. Just give OK and close the palette. I'll right click Repeat Line and I'll snap onto the Zen point since the OZNAP is on. I'll click here, keep the cursor in the leftward direction and I'll give the value 60. Now I'll activate the dynamic input and I'll give 332.34 as the distance. Press the tab key and give 45 degree as the angle. And I have drawn the inclined line. Now I'll keep my cursor in this direction and I'll give 332.34 as the distance. I'll press tab key and give 45 degree as the angle and enter. The second inclined line is drawn. Now I'll give close to complete this triangle. Next I'll draw another line from this end point, 60 unit rightward, then at an angle of 45 degrees with a length of 332.34, then connect with this end point. Right click, repeat line, I'll start from this point, then turn off the dynamic input and activate ortho. I'll keep the cursor in the rightward direction and type 60. Now the free movement of the cursor is restricted, so I'll turn off the ortho. Now, I want to draw an inclined line at 45 degrees. For that, I'll activate another mode in status bar that is called Polar Tracking. Once you activate Polar Tracking, your cursor snaps at regular angular increments or the cursor stops temporarily at predefined angular increments. To define these increments, just click on the small arrow near the Polar Tracking icon at the status bar and you can see the predefined angular incremental settings. You have 90, 180, 270 just like ortho and 45, 90, 135, 30, 60, 90 likewise you have a number of predefined settings. But if you want you can set your own increments using the tracking settings option. This is my required increment 45, 90. Now I'll keep my cursor at an angle of 45 degree and you can directly type the distance 332.34. Now I can connect with this end point. I should draw another line like this. For that I'll click on this line. You will get certain points in blue color and these points are called grips. You can take the cursor to any of these grips and you can make a click to activate it. The color of the grip is red and it is called a hot grip. You can move the cursor and connect with this end point. Now I have stressed that line based on that grip point. We will have another video on grips wherein this concept will be covered exclusively. Now we have covered almost all methods to create lines in AutoCAD. The fully dimensioned drawing file of this house is given below this video. You can download it and make a try. That's all about the various methods to create lines in AutoCAD. In the next tutorial, I'll introduce you to points, circles and arcs.